Hello everyone. This is Tithi here. So friends, are you preparing for CSIR NET exam on your own? Well, yes, it is doable. Okay? Yes. So you can do it. But then at the same time, if you have the proper guidance, okay, then your efforts will not be everywhere and you can op you can you can apply a directed effort so that you get the maximum output. Okay, so in today's session, I'm going to tell you uh, smart self-study techniques which will help you to prepare on your own for the CSIR net exams. Okay, and if you modify it, so here I will be specifically talking about CSIR net exams, but the techniques, some are very general self-study techniques. So if you modify it, you can apply it for any other competitive exam. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. So today I have come up with 10 such smart study techniques. So we'll see them one by one. So step one will be unit selection. Okay. See, first of all in CSI net, so when you are starting your preparation, the first thing that you should do is take the syllabus and go through it properly. Okay. Now, for qualifying in the exam, it is not required that you have to study each and every unit thoroughly. Yes, you have to do maximum of it, but there is no need to go for all the 13 units. Okay. So here in unit selection, you have to understand that you have to select only 9 to 10 units and then prepare them thoroughly. By thoroughly, I mean that any question that is asked from those sections, if you are able to do it, then you will qualify JRF. Just, uh, I, I can write it down to you, okay? You don't have to uh, prepare all the 13 units. But at the same time, this is true. At the same time, it is also true that the unit that you are selecting should be the important unit, okay? This is very important. Like if we, there's no point if you are spending your month, uh, one month of your precious time in, 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 uh, in preparing for a unit from where hardly ever question come. For example, unit 12 in CSIR net. The same unit 12 is important for gate biotech. But for CSIR net, unit 12 is not that important. Right. So if you are spending one month of your time in preparing unit 12, that will be a waste of time. Instead, if you are using that one month of time and spending it for preparing unit 1, that will be extremely helpful to you. Right, because unit one biochemistry is very, very important. Okay, so you have to do the correct unit selection. So when you go through the syllabus in the beginning only, mark those units that you want to uh, select. Okay, so there are different biotechnical videos as well where the faculties talk about the un important units, important topics. So you can go through them and select and do your unit selection. Okay, now once you are done with the unit selection, Next step will be to set up a routine, okay? Preparing timetable is very important, okay? So it is, see, this timetable thing is not only important when you go to a school or college, okay, to, to give you the total idea of the thing and to, to, to organize everything, but it is also important for your self-study, okay? So that you can prepare well, okay? And you are not giving emphasis only to... Uh, to, to one topic or only one part of the day where you are studying, other part you are not studying, okay? So this will make sure that your study sessions are properly organized. Now, I'll give you a tip in this. So uh, first of all, you divide your day into three sections, most productive, moderately productive and least productive. Okay, so I'm not saying that morning or night here because every person have a different um, uh, different preference for like personally if I tell you for me I was a morning person I can get up early in the morning and my morning times when the house is completely quiet that used to be my most productive time but I have seen many people for whom night time and again the house is quiet and everybody is sleeping that is the most productive time so you choose your most productive time. Okay, and then in the most productive time, what will you study? Study the, impo the the new concepts, okay, the concepts that need more focus, more concentration. Study those concepts in the most productive time. In the moderately productive time, like you are a little distracted, so at that time, you can either go for the questions, uh, solving sessions or of the topics that you have covered in the most productive time, or you can do the revisions, 
okay or you can do those uh, topics for like you have an idea but you just need to brush up okay so like revision only so most productive times of the day can be used in that and the least productive time okay when you are most distracted okay that time what all you can do so that time uh, you can watch some animations in the youtube okay there are a lot of free animations are available in the youtube you can go for it and many good uh, like i'm not saying that watch your animation movie okay not related to your subject i'm talking about subject related topics okay like the various molecular techniques or various lab techniques okay especially the lab techniques that you were not able to perform in your graduation and post graduation okay so those lab techniques like spectrophotometry is there pcr is there okay uh, dna sequencing is there so watch the animations watch the molecular biology transcription translation all these things okay and you can also watch the recombinant dna technology uh, related experiments okay so watch this animations that will give you an idea about how exactly the work is done okay so when you are exposed to the three a theory of it because you already have the experience of watching the practical so that will be very very helpful to you and anyways i hope you all know that our brain is capable of retaining the visual informations much better than the theoretical information okay so use those least productive times in that and also the least productive times can be used by practicing part a questions okay in the later part i will tell you like how to approach the part a section but apart from that yes part a is something that you cannot ignore okay do not ignore every point every single point you score in part a are like your bonus scores okay so the least productive times you can use for part a questions but for for solving math uh, the numericals the math related questions okay so that will kind of uh, break the monotony of the just uh, biological theoretical knowledge okay so use all your time it's not that least productive so you will leave it no use that time also okay so make your timetable when you are setting up your routine so make the timetable considering this important things now once this routine is also set we'll go to step number 3 that will be practice pomodoro technique so your actual study sessions you will perform by pomodoro technique so uh, I, i there are various videos from biotechnica which talks about like how you should do the pomodoro technique i'll just give you a brief idea so in pomodoro technique what we do is we divide the uh, sessions into small segments let's say 25 minutes um, uh, uh, a session okay one session will be of 25 minutes but what is most important that you have to do it without any distraction okay so make sure you gather all your study materials before it put your phone in the silent mode or airplane mode okay do not look at your phone do not look at the time set a timer okay and there are various apps also available for practicing the pomodoro technique you can look for it or you just set the timer for 25 minutes okay and study one topic for that 25 minutes without any distraction with your full focus okay once the timer is off don't check the time in between also okay just wait for the timer to ring till that time do not watch do not pick up your clock do not pick up your phone also if you are checking the time or again and again so that becomes a distraction that itself becomes a distraction and it spoils your uh, session okay so only stop your folk study when the timer rings okay that time take 5 minutes break and again start a new session okay like that when you have completed four successful pomodoros then you can take a longer break of 15 to 20 minutes so in this 15 to 20 minutes again i will suggest that do not start surfing internet or going through the social media just relax you can go out for a walk you can enjoy your coffee drink some water take a walk around the house or you can just uh, close your eyes and meditate okay so that will like calm you down all right and then once those uh, 15 to 20 minutes are done again start the cycle okay so in the beginning also if you are able to do only 10 pomodoros okay so that that you understand how much it is 5 hours of solid study so for a start it is extremely good okay and slowly you can increase the number of pomodoros okay and you can also uh, like once you get the, uh, the get, get used to this technique you can also increase the time here okay you can do the modifications according to your concentration level so please do that 
Try it out. You will see that you will become more and more effective by using this Pomodoro technique. Next uh, uh, tip will be to practice focus and diffuse thinking. Now, what we, uh, what I mean by this is practice thinking is when you, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, the focus thinking will be when you are concentrating on the topic alone, okay. But if you see the CSIS syllabus, okay, so it is not only a single topic, there are related topics as well, okay. For example, let's say you are uh, studying translation. You are studying translation, you have studied post-translational modification, okay. So, that is uh, like a focus topic, okay. But then that is from unit 3. Now, unit 2, after the proteins are properly translated and post-translation modification is done, then what happens? Then the proteins are sorted and transported, okay. So, that portion that is protein sorting and transport will come in unit 2. Okay, so it becomes, so when you do this diffuse thinking, okay, that means you try to see the bigger picture. So you relate the topics in different units and so that you can see the entire scenario, okay, not a focus, small step of a larger process, okay, you join the steps and you see the whole scenario. That will uh, make your concept more clear, more stronger and you will be uh, able to uh, understand the concept okay so and you know what when you understand the concept then there is no need of memorizing the things it is all it all starts making sense okay so practice this focused and diffuse thinking that will help you in linking between the topics of the syllabus next will be make your own notes okay so when you are making your notes uh, it should be uh, take care that they are short accurate it covers all the important aspects of the topic now if there is any numerical or anything is uh, involved or is included from the topic make sure that you write the uh, the formula of it and you write one example numerical of that okay now what is the benefit of this note so when you make this note some people think that there will be waste of time why to do that and just underline it in the book and go ahead Okay, see when you make the notes, it serves two purpose. One thing is it has uh, the studies have shown that when you write something in your own words, okay, so you summarize the thing. And when you summarize the thing, that means you are involving your brain. So that thing will get embedded in your memory much faster and that will be retained for much longer time as well. Okay, one benefit. Second benefit which will come is with at the time of revision. Okay, so at the time of revision when you do not have time to go through the entire text or you go do not have time to go through the entire, uh, en en entire book. Okay, that time this notes will help you. Okay, because they are already, uh, already, uh, they, they, they are uh, present in short form. Okay, important things only are there. So you can revise them much easier and in, in much uh, much lesser time as well. So next moving on to step, uh, step number six will be regular revisions. Okay, so there is no way you can do without revisions. And for revisions, the best uh, practice will be to, uh, to, to practice this spaced revision technique. What is this space revision technique is when you are studying something new. So you revise it more frequently and slowly you increase the time lapsed between each round of revision. Okay. For example, uh, you are uh, studying the plant hormones. Okay. There are many plant hormones. Many questions come also from plant hormones. Okay. So what you do is initially you revise it every day. Okay. After a week, you revise it after every three days. Okay, all the plant hormones, what are their functions, okay. Then you revise it once in a week. Then you revise it once in 15 days, okay. So slowly what you are doing, you are increasing the time lapse between two adjacent repeat, uh, revision tech, revisions, okay. Now in case you are revising it in 15 days and you forgot something, okay. That means you have to go one step back and you have to start revising the topic again for once every week okay so again if you are comfortable if you get comfortable in that then you increase the time okay so that's why in your routine there should be time spent for revision okay and that revision has to be completely regular okay then only you will practice this retention and recalling technique which will help you at the time of exam 
Next, practice the previous year question papers and mock tests. Yes, there is no uh, shortcut from that and there is no runaway also from that. You have to study this previous year questions and if you study it, you will find that they are extremely helpful. But when you study it, okay, so you should get a proper idea about how the exam will be conducted, okay. So sit with a timer. Do not take one entire day in solving one three hour paper, paper okay? Sit with a timer and you, uh, and make, so you, you choose a time when you are completely alone or there won't be any distraction, there won't be any, there won't be any disturbances. Sit with a timer and make sure you do not stop the timer or do not get up from the uh, practice session in between, okay? And then you make the environment, okay? So that will help you get acclimatized to the environment condition, the, 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 the exam condition. It will also help you to identify which questions to do, which questions to leave, okay? And so here in this practice sessions, if you are doing any mistakes, that's absolutely okay. But if you are learning from these mistakes and you are not repeating it in the exam, okay? So practice previous year question papers and this will be, be this will become very, very important, especially during the last month before exam. Okay, that is the time when you should all only do revisions and practicing previous year question papers. Okay, next use mnemonics for memorizing. So, see, majority of the topics, yes, they are concept based. So, if you have to understand the concept, you are understanding it, you will be able to solve the question. But along with that, there will be certain uh, sections where you have to memorize the thing. Okay. For example, the different, uh, uh, the group, uh, the, the classification, okay, that comes in unit 9, nomenclature and classification part. Yes, and also in unit 11, okay, the geological time scale, okay, which is very important. And you cannot, there is no other way, you have to memorize that times and species that evolved as their special features and all those things okay so wherever possible use mnemonics so mnemonics are like a rhyme or an unrelated sentence that help you remember the order of the events in a uh, events okay so mnemonics they help you in uh, understanding the thing like uh, it will help you in remembering the thing and then it will help you in recalling also faster so make your own mnemonics or you can look in the internet for the mnemonics for remembering those things okay so use them and use this technique and memorize the things wherever you have to memorize Step nine, as I told you that part A should include, uh, should be included in your daily routine. Okay. Now for part A, what should you do? So first of all, do not avoid part A, practice part A. Okay. See the part A section, if you see, it's general aptitude and it's not that they will ask you aptitude of 11th or 12th related maths. Like there won't be any calculus or anything. The simple mathematics 10th level, okay, standard 10th uh, level of mathematics will be there. So for that, learn the formulas and most of the time you will see that you know, already know the formulas, okay, like uh, the area, the geometrical questions, okay, the surface area, the volume, okay, but it needs a little brush up because you have left it many years ago, okay. So you try to, so you brush up the formulas and then you understand the concept one more time. Okay, and then practice the numericals regularly. So you don't have to spend hours in understanding the concept. Okay, just use half an hour or one hour for the for understanding the concept and looking in the formulas and then start solving questions related to it. So every day, okay, one day you can do one topic. Okay, so one topic and then five or ten questions related to that topic. Okay, so and again in the next day you can pick up a next topic. Okay, if you want, you can revise this topic after two, three days. Okay, so again, you are doing what? You are doing the space revision. Okay, so do that and include part A as a part of your daily study session. And one most important thing is be positive and do not give up. I know CSR exam, it's like a marathon. It's like running for a math marathon, okay? It, the race is long, okay? There's six months time and you have to prepare for it. So do not give up in between and continue your pace. Most of the times what we see is students start in the January, okay? If you're targeting for June exam, you are in January, you are full of enthusiasm and you are putting in eight hours of study time. But after a month, you burn out. And then it becomes difficult for you even to put four hours of study time a day. Okay. And that is where most of the people go wrong. 
okay and again this try to pick up by the fifth month but then it will be too late okay there will be lot of things left and you won't be able to cover so the thing is you study slow okay so you study with five or six hours per day okay and slowly increase your time or study time okay and do not give up be positive it's okay if there is some festivals or some family uh, functions are coming in between okay it's okay to take one or two days break in between but you have to ensure that you come back after that break do not let that break continue for 15 days that won't be acceptable okay so do be positive do not give up and i assure you with this smart techniques you will for sure succeed in your csir preparation even when you are studying on your own okay and as i was telling you you can modify this techniques and apply for apply in any competitive exam that you are preparing for i really hope that this helps you you practice that and please let us know uh if you know of any other technique that helps you better or how, what do you think about all this smart uh, smart uh, techniques okay thank you everyone and all the best for your preparation